Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Guided Hacking Ida Pro tutorial. This tutorial could drag on for hours. Ida Pro is an incredibly complex program and it's a very, very powerful. So I'm just going to show you a few things and as much as I know. So Ida Pro can do static analysis, meaning you can load your binary in and it's just going to look at the file on disk or you can also attach a debugger so you have two options one thing to note is when you're using Ida Pro there is a 32-bit executable and a 64-bit make sure you're mashing it with the game that you're using uh, Assault Cube is 32-bit so I'm going to use the 32-bit version the reason for this is that once you started disassembling um, the hex rays decompiler which is a plug-in only works if you're using uh, the right executable so we just drag and drop into Ida Pro, click run. Ida's going to ask us uh, loading a new file. And so it's loaded all the default options. It's detected, you know, it is a portable executable. Meta PC means we're going to disassemble all opcodes. Uh, so all these options are fine for 99% for of applications. When you start getting into things that are packed or perhaps, uh, you know, anti-cheat, or, you know, maybe Ida's just not detecting the executable properly, then you would have to change these settings. But again, I don't recommend it. I've never needed to. First thing that happens, uh, Ida's detected that there is a PDB file uh, linked with this application, but of course, this is from the guy who made Assault Cube, and it is not in the Microsoft Symbol store, so no, we don't want to look for it. So first thing that happens, is up here this is a graph of all the sections of the binary and it's gonna parse the entire file and uh, figure out what's going on so please confirm Ida has a new mode called proximity view I'm so used to the old mode that I don't use proximity mode uh, it's similar to uh, graph mode basically so Let's just look at this uh, graph again up here. You can see that there's uh, light blue is library functions. So these are statically uh, linked functions. Uh, the gray is data. Uh, you have a regular function. So that's just regular code in the blue. And uh, the rest of it we can kind of ignore. Gives you a good idea, you know, where you're at in the file. So there, just right away we see uh, it's already detected the winmain function, and it's brought us to that, which is nice. And this is what's called uh, graph view, okay? Because the, there's this, this is called a node, okay? And when you get to another function, you're going to see uh, the rest of the nodes, and I'll show you that. So here's the uh, start of the function, and then there's all these nodes. And this is uh, highly, highly customizable. Uh, it's basically a flowchart. Uh, when you're ju when you're comparing or doing tests and then you're jumping to another location based on that conditional you can see it right here so that's graph view you can also right click and you can go to text view and so that's going to bring us back to this uh, depending what you're doing uh, you know use their mode that works the best for you the other view we can look at is uh, hex view so we can view uh, just like a um, a hex editor we have structures this d when ida pro disassembles the file it detects different structures usually having to do with windows that uh, it's automatically detected and it's automatically add them to the structure table if you press Control uh, plus on these it'll open up the structure and show you the member variables and you can add your own here uh, by pressing uh, insert uh, so let's see what that looks like. Uh, so you can, you know, create a structure. Let's call it weapon. Okay, and then we want to insert some... I believe we can insert some structures here. Create member variable, uh, data. So go down here, and we can double-click that. And you, when you want to change the name of something, you press N on it, okay? So press N and call this, you know, ammo. So that's the basic idea behind it. 
I've only used this a few times. Another thing that's really cool that you can do is if you have reclass files or maybe you have the source code for the game, you can go to file, uh, load file, and you can see right here, parse C header file. If you have a header file that's only written in C, no C++ crap, uh, you can parse it right in and then so you can assign addresses to that data type. Then when you're analyzing functions, instead of saying, you know, uh, ESP plus 16 plus offset 0xc, it's going to tell you exactly the name of that variable, which is nice. Uh, enumerators, you can do the same thing, just like structures. You can add some enumerators. So instead of looking at these if statements, uh, you know, if variable A is 0x00007, you can type out some enumerators, you know, for the game type, the weapon number, that kind of thing. Hugely important here is the imports uh, window. It's going to list all the imported functions from dynamic link libraries, and they're going to be listed here with their addresses. So when you uh, dynamically analyze one of these things, you can double click it. It's going to send you right to the address. So this is cool. Uh, especially for hooking and that kind of thing. You can kind of just peek through here and see uh, what you might want to hook. Kernel 32, obviously, uh, it wants to speak, you know, every executable needs to speak with the kernel. This actually is a huge import table for kernel 32, I feel like. Uh, OpenGL, so obviously right off the bat, we know this game uses OpenGL. We see OpenAL, which is the audio and the standard uh, development library. You can get a good idea if this program uh, connects to the internet by seeing, by checking out this stuff. What is this, uh, Windows Socket 2 uh, library, 32-bit? And in, in all this stuff, what you can do, you can right-click on everything and go to Quick Filter, which is fantastic. And so now, like, we want to see, okay, does this game connect to the internet? Okay, so obviously there's some stuff going on with sockets, so we know that. Exports, of course, for a executable, there's only one export, and uh, for obviously a uh, DLL, you'll see a lot more. So there's two other windows we're looking at right now, and that is the output window, which is down below. This is going to tell you all the information uh, about what IDA is doing uh, as it gets loaded, and then as you do things, like it'll say, okay, command make name failed. I think that was before when I was editing that structure. And what's cool is it does have this little console window here. IDC is the native built-in IDA scripting language. I've actually played with it a little bit. And then IDA Python's built right in too. And so you can write scripts for this, um, which is really the huge power. Uh, if you're dealing with packed executables and that kind of thing, you can write some great scripts to make your life a lot easier. And just like uh, anything, IDA Pro has tons of plugins and tons of scripts available on the internet. So what's cool right here is uh, with Python, you can do, uh, you know, simple little expressions down here uh, if you want to. Sometimes I like to do it to use to do uh, calculations uh, and it'll print you out the answer right there. <coughs> so that's kind of cool. Let's look at the function window. Um, this is the function window. Let's just expand it out here. So basically what it's done is it's found all the functions and it does this based on uh, the call. It knows the calling convention and how the stack is set up so it can detect all the subroutines. So here's, you know, the first one. Uh, the code base in almost all executables is uh, at the image place plus uh, hex 1000. So there you see that right here. And you can right-click on it, you can edit function, and you can change the name of it. You can uh, change some of the default settings. Sometimes I like to come right in here and then just copy this uh, address right out of there. That's a really easy, quick way to do it. All right, so it lists all the functions. Uh, we're sorting by function name. Sometimes I like to sort it by um, the start address of the function in the other direction. And you scroll down. Uh, Ida will name some of these functions for you if they are being imported or maybe they're from a uh, static link from a library. So if we scroll all the way down here, we can see here are some 
functions that uh, are in the SDL uh, library. And again, just like everything else, um, double click it and it's going to show you um, what that's all about on this side. Let's, what we should do is, uh, oh, interesting, there's a ton more down the here. So let's look at Assault Cube quickly. I've got Assault Cube running right here. I got my cheat engine table up. Let's take a look at some of these things and I'll show you what we do here. So I just grabbed, uh, this is the pointer to the local player. So what we're going to do is we are going to click, uh, we're going to press G for go to, and we're going to type that address in. So this has been detected as a data section. So we can see that these are all uh, pieces of data. It's even detected this as a D word, while other ones have been detected as a byte. Um, before I get into that, let me just uh, come up here and just show you uh, some important things up here uh, in the main menu. Uh, jump to all these different things. The main thing I do is I press G because I want to jump to an address. You can also uh, open up the function window with Control P and jump to a function. You can search for data, you can search for code. Uh, everything you can do in Cheat Engine, you can do it right here. Uh, unfortunately, some of these things, a Cheat Engine is definitely faster and, and more intuitive. Uh, you can even search for uh, array of byte right here, sequence of byte. You can go to view and click open subviews and that's gonna open uh, all these windows that you can use. We looked at disassembly, proximity browser is kind of like graph view. We have the hex dump window, and this is a uh, decompile function. This is the hex raise decompiler, which is a plugin. Basically, it's going to take the function assembly, and it's going to spit out some C code, um, uh, some pseudo code that's going to make uh, understanding the function a hell of a lot easier. You can also decompile the whole program. We've looked at all these things. One thing we can, oh, strings. Strings, this lists every single string. So these are obviously like some decorated function names down here by the looks of them. And you can view all strings just like we talked about before. We can go to quick filter and we can look, uh, you know, for the word player. And so these are all the strings with, the, with player in it. Let's look, uh, segments. Right here, this lists all the segments, and this comes basically straight out of the portable executable file, uh, the different sections. When you, when you go from a static analysis to attaching your debugger, you may see a lot more, you may see a lot more segments in here. Um, particularly if you see a ton of uh, debug segments, that means that these locations of memory are being dynamically uh, allocated. Um, generally, the file, if you have a, like hundreds of those, the file's definitely packed in some way, or it's loading files off disk and loading it into memory. Uh, I know with Open Arena, with the virtual machines, uh, it really made my life difficult. Uh, you can see the start and ending address of each of these sections. If you go over to class, you can see code, okay? So we have the dot text section is all code, and then these three, three, three sections are data. IDA's not always 100% accurate on this, but if you're using just a regular old game, it'll work fine. You can uh, right click and edit segment also, so maybe uh, this whole segment is code, you can change that to code, uh, which I've done before actually. So what else was open sub views, signatures, type libraries, uh, type libraries is an interesting one. So in the analysis of this file, Ida discovered based on signatures that uh, the SDK version to use in the disassembly for this is the Windows XP version. And the compiler used was probably Visual C++ uh, version six. <laughs> You can view all the different pool toolbars. Basically, when you're in basic mode, you have a few toolbars. If you click on advanced mode, uh, switch to advanced UI, you get all of these toolbars up here. And honestly, so I think it's more uh, complicated than it's worth. So I usually just play around in basic.
the debug options, you, you can start the process so you can attach to it. There's processor options. Uh, if you look right here, you can pick the different types of debuggers you want to use. The only ones I've used are the local Win32 and then the Win uh, DBG debugger. In, in options, the only option I've, I've ever played with is this reanalyze program button. If you've gone in and edited a bunch of stuff and you want all that information to propagate, uh, or maybe it's going to change the way that f uh, function gets analyzed, then you want to reanalyze uh, the solution, definitely. Nothing else exciting in here except for compiler. So IDA automatically detects the compiler used... Uh, to make the game and the calling convention is automatically figured out if for some reason this information is wrong you can come in in here and edit it uh, the local player pointer which is right here so let's start by saying we know that's the um, local player pointer so what you do is you press N and now you can rename it this is the beauty about Ida your names that you place in here are going to propagate throughout the whole disassembly. So let's call this uh, P for pointer local player. And press OK. Just use the default options in 99% of all cases. So IDA is interesting in some of the types that it uses. Um, so it's saying that this is an integer, but you know, as we know, uh, a D word or an in uh, the they're both the same thing in this case because uh, an address is a positive value. So now let's right click on local player. So let's see where else this address is used. So this is uh, jump to cross reference to operand. So we click that and then these are all the instructions that access it, the local player pointer. So that's just like uh, what accesses this address uh, in Cheat Engine. So we can open up uh, anything we want in here. It's going to take us to that instruction. And we can scroll up and see uh, what subroutine we're at. So this is the subroutine. I don't know what the hell this does. But let's look. Let's try to find the function that accesses our uh, health address. And to do this, I'm just going to use Cheat Engine for a second. Because I just want to jump right into that function. Sometimes I, I do. I use both IDA and um, Cheat Engine. I actually almost always do. So let's look at our health address. Here it is. We are going to do find out what accesses this address. Check, click yes. Um, find out what accesses the address pointed to by this pointer. And here we see this is our classic thing here. EBX is going to be the address of our local player object, uh, dynamically located, and then we're adding offset F8, which is the health offset. So let's find the function that decreases our health. So as, as we always do in the tutorials, let's find a grenade. I'm sure everyone's getting so sick of seeing this. And shoot ourselves. Okay. So now I see this one right here. I see this one, which is uh, ed editing our health variable. Meanwhile, this one is, it uh, looks like it's comparing our health to zero. Let's check out this one here. Some more information. Let's grab the address right here. All right, so address right here. We will press G, jump to address. There's the address of the instruction. So here is a function. It looks, we can see right off the bat, we see this jump table, case zero, case one. So this is a switch statement, most likely. And the, the one instruction we just saw was subtract EDI from EBX plus four. So if EBX plus four is our health address, uh, that's four is the offset to the health, which is interesting. So EBX is not the dynamic location of the local player but uh, it's something, we're not positive right now, but offset four to the health. So we can do anything we want in here. We can right click this, we can look at graph view. And let me just shrink this and this so we can get a better look. Hold control and scroll in and out with your uh, 